My final project for Cognitive Science Spring 2013 course is about Boltzmann machines. A brief overview of what I will cover in this video. First, I will introduce neural networks, which we already studied uh, in class, but I will describe the general type of neural networks here. Then neural computing, an area in computer science, particularly in artificial intelligence. We will discuss about the difference between the human brain, also known as the man, and artificial networks, also known as the machine. Then I will cover what the connectionist model is, since the Boltzmann machine is related to this type of model in neural computing. In the third section of the presentation, I will introduce the Boltzmann machine and talk about its structure. Finally, I will go over types of learning in Boltzmann machines and mention the five approaches characteristic to them. Neural networks are of two kinds. Biological neural networks, for example, neurons in the human brain, and artificial neural networks. These are used for solving artificial intelligence problems. In class, we've already studied a couple of you, like the Simple Recurrent Network, or SRN, or Sejnowski and Rosenberg's NetTalk. Below, we have an image of a simple neural network. It resembles the ones we studied in class. There is an input layer, an output layer, and even a hidden layer. Remember that the ones with the hidden layer we we'll discuss a bit later in the course. Neural computing developed from massive parallelism, an analogy which was created between the human brain and neural networks. It represents an area in computer science, particularly in AI, which investigates computational models aiming at achieving human-like performance in computer systems through a dense interconnection of simple processing elements that is, by establishing an analogy with the human brain. Its greatest potential is in areas with high computational rates, such as speech and image processing. The purpose of neural computing is to make computers more user-friendly, so that people will need to do a great deal of adjusting when communicating with computers. We can look at the brain as a network of neurons. Similarly, the computer is a network of transistors, but there are two main differences between the two. Firstly, there is a large difference in connectivity. Nodes in a computer are only sparsely connected. For instance, a transistor is connected, on average, to less than 10 other transistors. On the other hand, though, neurons have up to 10,000 synaptic connections with other neurons. The second major difference is in response time. The response time in neurons is of the order of the milliseconds, but for transistors, is of the order of nanoseconds. Thus, we can conclude that transistors operate about a million times faster than neurons. Now we will introduce the connectionist model. But firstly, there are two types of neural computing models. The models that emphasize computational aspects, here a particular focus are the connectionist models, and models emphasizing biological fidelity. Fidelity. Other names for the first category, or those that emphasize computational aspects, are artificial neural net models, parallel distributed processing models, or neuromorphic models. What are connectionist models, though? Well, they can be, anal they can be analogous to neural networks in the human brain, but the following are typical characteristics of a connectionist model. Each unit can be in one of the two discrete states. For example, in human brain, we have firing and non-firing modes of a neuron in human brain. Then the interaction between units and neighbors may be excitatory or inhibitory. Units operate in parallel, that is, they simultaneously try to adjust states to those of neighbors. Lastly, information is totally distributed and stored in as connection strands. Now let's talk about the Boltzmann machine. The Boltzmann machine is a type of a connectionist model. It was introduced by Hinton and Sejnowski in 1993, but the idea of using stochastic networks was first laid out by Mosuris in 1974. Boltzmann machines have the following characteristics. Their units have binary state values, either on or off. The connections are bidirectional. You can also see this in the image at the bottom of the slide. There are no arrows drawn on connections, suggesting the bidirectionality or you can say non-directionality, of the model. Also, they use probabilistic state transition mechanism. And they can have hidden units to capture higher-order regularities when learning. 
In the picture example, we see all edges are undirected, no arrows on them. And out of seven units, four are visible and three are hidden. Also know that Boltzmann machines show, uh, that show connections between same type units, for instance, here H1 is connected to H2 or V1 connected to V4 and so on. These are called <clears throat> non-restricted Boltzmann machines. In the case where hidden units exhibit direct connections only with visible units and vice versa, the Boltzmann machine is called restricted. What's the purpose of studying Boltzmann machines though? The academics would say there are three main reasons to study this area in computer science and AI. Firstly, the Boltzmann machines exhibit a generalized approach applicable to three basic research issues in neural computing. They are search, representation, and learning. Then, there is the rigorous mathematical formalism of the model. It allows us to construct a simple learning algorithm suited for both supervised and unsupervised learning. I'll discuss more on these types of learning later in the presentation. Lastly, the simplicity of the model, which makes it easy to put directly onto silicon. We can encounter Boltzmann machine use in solving combinatorial optimization problems. The Boltzmann machine is a network which consists of a number of two-state units that are connected in some way. It is represented via a pseudograph. B is equal to U, C, where U represents a finite set of units and C is a set of unordered pairs of elements of U, denoting connections between units. This set of connections includes all loops. When two units are connected, we call them adjacent. Unit U can be in either on or off state. With each unit, a zero or off or one on variable is associated. A connection is activated when both units U and V are on. Additionally, with every connection, a connection strength is associated. The connection strength is a quantitative measure for the desirability that some connection UV is activated. If the value is positive, then it is desirable for the connection to be activated, that is, it exhibits excitatory behavior. If it is negative, then it is undesirable, that is, the behavior is inhibitory. Further, Boltzmann machines have a consensus function which is either large if many excitatory connections are activated or small if many inhibitory connections are activated. The objective of the Boltzmann machine is to achieve globally maximal configuration, also known as maximum consensus. There are two models of Boltzmann machines, sequential Boltzmann machines where units are allowed to change states only one at a time, and parallel Boltzmann machines, where units are allowed to change states simultaneously. Finally, we will talk about learning in a Boltzmann machine. We divide the learning categories in three. Neural modeling, exhibited by general purpose learning systems, that starts with little or no initial structure. We see incremental changes of probabilities that the neurons or units are activated. This type of systems cannot generate high-level knowledge. They are primarily used in low-level learning, such as pattern recognition. Then, there is symbolic concept-oriented learning, which is applicable to higher-level knowledge using logic or graph representation, as opposed to numerical or statistical model methods. An example is learning symbolic descriptions. Finally, there is knowledge-intensive learning. This is task-oriented knowledge, and there are constraints used in guiding the learning process. It has a very specific application area. There are five main approaches to machine learning in general. First one is rote learning and direct implanting of new knowledge. Characteristic to it is memorization of given facts and data. Then, learning from an instructor such as a teacher. Third one is learning from analogy or similarity, similarity. Learning from examples, for instance, a set of examples and counterexamples are given to the system. And last one is called learning from observation and discovery. It is a general form of learning and is also called unsupervised learning. The Boltzmann machine learning belongs to the latter two classes, that is learning from example 
and learning from observation and discovery. If the machine is used for strict classification, in which case we have supervised learning, then we can use the approach by examples. But if machine is used as associative or content addressable memory, that is a supervised learning, then we use the approach by observation and discovery. We have an example of classification problem where, where the machine has to classify images of tables and chairs. At the beginning, you give the machine inputs, for instance, image of a table or chair, and make it to learn to give the correct output, which would be the correct category of the furniture. But the machine can further learn to generalize. For instance, you can give it an output, the word chair or table, and make it generate the input correctly. So, the machine can generate for given input, most probable output, and for given output, the most probable input. In this case, learning in the Boltzmann machine is analogous to learning from examples. This type of algorithm is also called a maximum likelihood method. And I would like to thank Professor Douglas Bank for the entire course of the semester, which I enjoyed very much, and for Having this presentation, I used Emil Ars and Jan Kors' book. And finally, I used Wikipedia for images. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.